call the meeting to order at 7.01. Uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, then we'll move to the consent agenda to approve the minutes of Tuesday, May 16th. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Anybody have anything? I, uh, I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second it. <coughs> any, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, minutes are passed. Uh, is there any public comment at this time? Okay, do we have any board comments? Greg Deutschman went well. Good. Yeah, thank you. That was for, good. Yep. Thank you for it was good to see him off. Representing yeah. the board. I just wanted to add or just acknowledge the um, the girls track and field team um, in Division Three state championship. Um, you know, it wasn't just a championship, but they, they really beat everybody by a lot. So, <laughs> I mean, it was like 71 or <coughs> points that they beat everybody by. So, I mean, they, they, they are doing a bang up yeah. job there. And, and if you look at what they have to work with, you know, limited resources that we have at the school, I mean, those girls are really doing a great job. You know, and the boys as well. Um, yeah. The baseball team did great. And, and the baseball yeah. team. I, I, made, went, I went to the game up there and it was. It was, it was very sad game, but it, it, it was a sad game, and it was closer there. than uh, what you really think, because that had been beating everybody all the year, and they actually gave it a good run. So, so just want to acknowledge them. Great. Um, so we don't have a celebration of learning this month. Um, <clears throat> Jamie's not here yet so uh let's are we okay so move into the principal's report for now sure. we have our principal's report and our social emotional uh behavior data report uh and i think that our principal's report covers a lot of things talking about um kind of how we're ramping down and ramping up all at the same time ramping down from the end of this year when this was written and also uh, ramping up to summer and summer work. So elementary section kind of covers plans for what we're going to do in best uh, as a team and that agenda. Uh, and then we also, I don't know if it's section, we want to just have me all uh, roll. Roll, okay. Roll back though. Again, elementary is talking about um, the summer learning that some of the teachers are taking, or the one that's being offered and that teachers are, take, are doing. And then finally, just how we wrap up the year really busily with lots of fun concerts, art shows, field days. Um, lovely that the middle school invited us to participate in the Circus Mercus residency. Uh, we had carnivals and magicians, all right, a lot of fun right down at the end. And a couple clowns. And a couple one, clowns. One's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for the elementary. And uh, in the middle school, again, we, our group, um, the new principal, Pierre, is going to be going to best with the team. And that's pretty darn exciting, especially they get all to get together and spend some time, quality time together. Flexible pathways, we, uh, one thing I would highlight is we had an eighth grader who uh, really turned out to be the hero of the whole preschool. And they... If you went in there when he was in there, they're all playing with him. They can't wait to see him. He want, everybody wants him to read to them. And it couldn't have been better for a kid's self-esteem. A kid, every time he came out of there, was two inches off the ground. So we know that stuff works on, on people's hearts. And that kid re-engaged in school from that, I think. And <clears throat> on goal three, the community piece, we, I, I also highlighted the Circus Smirkus, so um, I do want to thank um, Felicia Diefenbach. She was instrumental in making sure that things ran smoothly, and she was sort of the circus uh, ringmaster of sorts. So good job, Mrs. Diefenbach. High school. High school. So um, the report's there. So one of the things we're working on this summer is advisory. I think it's, um, we're changing it up. We have had grades 9 through 12, and next year we're going with just grade 9, grade 
10, grade 11, and grade 12. There's different needs for that at different levels. I think that would be really important for our students. So we're working on a curriculum for that um, this summer, um, Shane Oaks and Ben Boynton and myself. Um, next up is our flex period. Next year we're starting a flex period. Um, one of the things that we talked about it might be called win, and that's kind of whatever is needed. So it's a period what, where whatever is needed. I know some of the kids' needs in math and literacy coming up might need some extra support, so that would be a period <coughs> to take care of that, as well as a period to work on flexible pathways. Um, we're finding that that's getting to be pretty popular in our school, which is outstanding. Um, the numbers for graduation this year was we graduated 48 students total. 50% are going on to a two or four year college. Uh, 15 in the workforce, 6% in the military, and 6% are taking a gap year. And then we have 11 students that are uh, we didn't get information on. So, and Rami, thanks for being there. That was great. Oh, it was my pleasure. <coughs> so, are we going to do the SEL report here, or do you, is it later in the agenda? Um, I think it's all um, bundled with all of the things that. I think it's just easier to talk in the place of questions if you have specific questions. Sorry, are we doing the, we're doing the SEL stuff now? Um, Am I wrong? Well, it's listed together. It's all listed. So. Yeah, it is. Um, does anybody have any questions for the principal on the rest of the reports? We're doing something good at the high school. We had but several students today were makeup exams, and several students emailed me last night to ask if they could still come into school to be in the gym. <laughs> yeah. These weren't students that I would think would want to stay at school. You yeah, know, right. you'd think they couldn't wait for the door to close and be gone. So I thought that was an exciting thing. I still had to say no, but. <laughs> um, just as. So in your report about the flex block, it says that flex block is the second version of explorations. What was the explorations thing? That? Explorations, were, we're trying to get rid of study hall, and explorations were for kids to work on projects throughout the semester, on things that they had a passion, it was like a passion project. I mean, we did have some students working on trucks and some on uh, um, a gun that she made mm -hmm. and different projects like that, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite as, uh, we wanted it, and then more kids got involved with flexible pathways through some, you know, their own projects and academics, and we didn't have time for it, really. So we're trying to do this flex block where it was, um, the new one coming up is where kids will have a chance to do flexible pathways, to do extra studying, Te all teachers will be available at that time. So that was a problem. So if I had a student right. in my flex class this past year, Explorations, and they were interested in trucks, and I had no information on trucks. I couldn't just send them up to somebody. And now, if they're doing an English, like online English class, then they can go to the English teacher because they're going to be available at that time. Yes. So I think so. Flexible Pathways is going to expand. <coughs> I think by twofold. Yeah. So before it was in the regular schedule, they would just take a class off to do something. Yeah, it kind of looked like, like a yeah. study hall. It really right. did. And that yeah. was frustrating. Over there. Yeah. We're going to improve that. How, but you haven't figured out like how long or? We figured it's fourth, the fourth period and um, everyone's available at this time and now we're trying to figure out what are the needs during that time. So okay. if there's math needs, one of the math teachers is going to have a group of students that we know that need that from Track My Progress. Mm -hmm. So they're already going to be in his class okay. and so on. Yep. Cool. Yeah. That seems like Sounds promising. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, why don't we uh, talk about the SEL data? Should we do it in grade level again? I I think it's just personally easier to just look and ask questions. I don't. Know that there's anything that I feel or that the our team feels is drastic or yeah. I guess it, looking at the data from 
it seems like there's so many variables that are kind of hard to control. You know, you have different teachers and different class groups and stuff, so it's hard to really get information about how we're doing out of just the dump of data, you know? Right. So I guess what I'd be interested in is your kind of conclusions of, like, you, you kind of have more context on what's going on and, and like, I think for it's elementary specifically, maybe a little bit less this data and more the PBS school climate survey is the data we're going to focus on at best and how to engage families better, how to make sure that families feel like they're being communicated with, how to make sure their perception of safety is, is accurate and that they, if they aren't feeling like their kids are safe here, what we can do differently. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think that was where the universal team wanted to focus their energy more <clears throat> with that than maybe this data. And I guess I sort of kind of gave the laundry list in the, in the principal's report for, at least for what the elementary wants to focus on. Um, <coughs> what we're mostly excited about is, I think we think that things are, are working generally pretty well. Um, yeah, generally very well. And I think we just, <laughs> we're trying to ease up how we were planning for the Wildcat times mostly. And then we're moving to that positivity project, which was just a resource so that we're not wasting people's, not wasting people's time. It's good time use, but a lot of planning time was going into those. So this is already done for us. I think one of the things that stands out for me in the middle school data is it's more than doubled the referrals. And I think part of that is there was a push, and when Pam Arnold came in, she set up a push for making sure people were actually writing people up. Right. One of the pieces coming back in and seeing it and actually talking with Andrew a little bit about it, it's turned into, and I think we should be very careful, writing a report but then having no responsibility as a teacher to, to be in that report, handing it to the office. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go back to the model of the first engagement is, and the most powerful, is with the person where the negative behavior happened instead of handing it to somebody that will fix it for you. Right. That's, I think, that's what I gleaned out of this. The double amount of reports, I think, is a good start. <coughs> but we need to, and I think your point, Andrew, we got to drill into there and see what, what's that mean, where is it, what's happening. The other piece that we don't show, and I don't think we show anywhere, is who wrote who up. So which teachers are doing the job of writing up people, which are, nobody writes up anybody, we want to learn how their magic works and work with them, or we, we just want to have, I think that's a piece where we'll have the most effect if we can do professional development with folks on, on writing people up in a meaningful way and teaching behavior so that it changes. Right. At the high school, you know, this is my first year as principal, and I thought it started off a little shaky. I mean, there was like five suspensions <laughs> in the first two <laughs> weeks of school, and I was like, is this the norm here? And then I think it was a trust thing, just having parents and guardians trust me and my and our decisions and working with them, like it takes a village, right? And having the parent or guardian come in and, and like work as a team to discuss how to improve. And I, I think a lot of it was they just were so unsuccessful in, in a certain class. Taking an algebra class where they really weren't successful and then they were just feeling frustrated like anybody would not being able to handle the work. So we found alternatives for them and after finding those alternatives these kids ended up loving school, loving class and they got jobs, you know, I mean it was, it was really kind of a neat experience. Um, one of the things we're talking about in our classes for next year is I took this class with Harry Wong which was the first days of school and everything is about procedures. So like, you know, you meet your student at the door, then as soon as the student comes in, there's an assignment on the, on the board, so they're starting to write, read, do math, whatever the class may be. So the teacher comes in, and then it's automatic. Like if they need a, part, uh, a pencil, then they know where to get a pencil. They need to go to the bathroom, they don't have to ask, it's a sign out, it's, everything is a procedure to that. And I think one of our, my goals for next year is to have students in class on time, which is the way it always is, but to stay engaged in class for the first 20 minutes. And I, we're finding that kids are coming in, dropping their bags, and then exiting, and then coming back six minutes later. Well, six minutes later, 
you know, we're ready to go. I mean, that's where I know as a coach or teacher, that's a lot of that learning was right there in the six minutes and kids are coming in, what's going on? And so just making that clear expectations for our students and, and, and so it's consistent across the school too. So <clears throat> some of the stuff for next year. Um, one thing I was wondering if it would be possible to do, like the kind of overall numbers are good to have, but they're no very noisy because, you know, all the changes and like, you know, there's a lot of context behind it. What I'd be curious about is, you know, we do have kind of some interventions that we do with behavioral things like the check-in, check-out type stuff, and, you know, there's kind of different levels to it. And if it would be possible to see, like, average number of referrals before intervention, average number of referrals after, you know, like, mm. are our interventions working? That type of thing. And if it's possible to tease that out of the data somehow. Um, so, I don't know. That might be difficult, but that was one thought I had just looking at kind of the, all the numbers at once, like, it's not completely difficult. <clears throat> I would say specifically to Chico, though, um, if they did have a certain number of write-ups after, they would go back to meeting that level of intervention. So it's not, it's fluid, right? Right, so, right. Yeah, so you're, but we could do that, absolutely. Yeah. I also, you know, the this slide that you see, this, uh, the fact that the middle school has gone from 3% last year in the top tier to 14 is really, it's red, a red flag. Yeah. So what, I would want to dig into that 14% because that is where we should be doing intensive prevention. And I can't tell you what that is right now, but it's a, a piece that we should maybe look at the kid, the teacher, what happened, and really break that apart. Yeah, and it also seemed like some of the, in the, list of what they were in, you know, getting referred for, there were kind of some of the more, like, bullying and harassment, you know, there were more of those, which is more concerning. Yes. Not that, you you know, all of, all of them are bad to have, but, you know, there's ones that are worse, and so, sure. you know, figuring out why those are going up, or what we can do to prevent those types of really harmful behaviors. I guess I had some just random observations and a couple of questions. So I don't know. I was trying to like, anytime I look at data, I'm trying to like, you know, find a correlation or a pattern or something, which, you know, it's kind of all over the place. But one thing that did stick out to me is it seemed like is that we have higher referrals on Thursdays. <laughs> so I don't know what goes on either Wednesday or Friday, but Thursday seems to be, you know, it seems to be like a higher referral day. Um, and then, obviously, and, and you would think that a majority of referrals would be more midday, you know, at 12 to 1, you know, in and around after lunch or something like that, which it seems like that's kind of a, a peak time as well. Um, so do, do we know, like, is there, is there something, or do, you know, do you teach your week to refer to a certain... In, our, in my years of doing or? this, it's always been Wednesday or Thursday, and I yeah. don't know why. Like, years, it's always Wednesday or Thursday. I don't... Is that because, you know, they, they started off the week and maybe as they get to Thursday, they start hitting it, <laughs> you know, trying to get over the hump for the week or, you know, we're at the, you know, towards the, and, and then Friday looks like it's, it's dead. Like it's, so at that point, at that point, if the teachers just said, okay, Monday we'll get them, or, uh, <laughs> but I was just kind of looking at it, it was kind of interesting um, on that. And then I know we do have, under the behaviors, we, you know, there are some data points in there in regards to, like, harassment. But do we have um, do we have more of a defined? I guess I'm kind of more worried about you know the the larger event bullying harassments that become an investigation type piece. So do we do we have Every data one of that we in collect? Here should have been an investigation. And, and do we have? And I guess then to expand on that, um, like do we have statistics on how many investigations we opened up versus how many? corrective behaviors that we might have done, you know, because not everybody that gets opened up an investigation 
We do have to report being... that out in a serious report to the state, yes. Okay. I just, um, how many I... were found versus how many were unfound, yes. Okay. And then I, I also have the notes on here that, you know, trying to figure out, you know, on the middle school is, is having more referrals, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or, or you know, and at that point, is it, are they the same referrals for the same thing that's not being corrected or, or the teachers more on top of, you know, referring students and not putting up with disruptive, disruptive behavior in the class or, you know, how, how that result um, looks on that. It would be kind of nice to know what some of that behind the scenes data would be. Sure. Um, the, and as you had the, mentioned. Your point about um, time of day, if you look at the middle school this year, it's all during break, mm -hmm. which tells me we need to do something different during break and lunch. Because, and I have anecdotally noticed that there's less supervision. It's more free play, backfield, and it leads to these little conflicts that build, I think. And there might be a better way for us to do that. Is that new? Did that happen the previous year? Because the, the pyramid that you were showing us, the 11% uh, seems like it transferred right from the best kids, 0 to 1, to the 6 plus, or is that children? Or what, what does it say? 6 plus referrals, what are we referring to? That's a kid getting 6. 6 plus. Okay, so that 11% in the middle school went right from our best kids numerically. It's not kid for kid, but numerically that we lost 11% on the zero to ones and, and went right to 11% on the six pluses, what changed so drastically between those two years that it didn't even, we didn't even get anything transitional in the two to five. I mean, yeah. we, we lost major ground. Was there, what can we pin that on? Is it that new period that you're talking about? Or it's not a new period? period. It's not. So no. that didn't change. What, what did sure. what did change? It, I feel like maybe something changed drastically between the two years. And, you know, I would only be answering anecdotally. I, That's it's, fine. It's, um, but I think some of it is better reporting. It is. That people were, you know, Pam really turned up the heat having teachers report things. Do you feel like we were underreported by that much? Or even, close, just, like we went from 108 to 255. We, this problem was there, and we were just underestimating it a little bit. I would be guessing. Okay. I think Pam came in and decided to make a system and she she put it up in the office it was very clear a structure so that to help her be able to to support teachers and respond to behavior and i personally think that's where you see the spike because it is very clear it says you give a warning mm -hmm. you um you remind give them a reminder and then it goes right to send to the office that is it, so i think that the middle school has some work to do when they go to the best um and i think they're going to get some education that will help them i think there's a middle point that has to happen there before you just send to the office and i do i personally think that's why there's a, a spike in those behavior sure. referrals because i think people were following directions and uh, i don't think it was bad i think it was good i think that's why a lot of behaviors got addressed better and I think that's why we saw a rise in bullying harassment complaints because kids were talking right to adults. Um, but I do think the middle school has some work to do to help enable classroom teachers to, to dig into responding to behavior. And one thing I don't see, or am I, it's not, well, it's not. It's, it's broken up by segments of grade, but not by grade. So I have, like, my question is if we have. Uh, referral problems, how many are in sixth and how many are in eighth? Because if they're eighth grade referral problems, they're going to be ninth grade referral problems next year. So, you know, this data can be skewed in a very grand way just by people stepping up and going to, to the next level. If, you know, 50% of it was eighth graders, 50% of these kids having problems are going to be ninth graders and we're going to be dealing with it on, a, on the other chart. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I think that's the good thing about this data, because we can drill down by class. That's something we do in our staff meetings uh, and in our teams. universal teams. Yeah. Is dig and we can even drill down by students specifically or by the specific behavior of the specific student. Um, so we're not showing you that on that level, but that's totally possible to do, and we do do it. So do we have a, an issue where we're going to be sending a lot of referral in the eighth grade class to the high school class? 
I can't tell right off the top of my head. Okay. But my guess would be yes. Okay. And they all, they all mature over the summer before they have <laughs> Keep dreaming. And, 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 fresh start, too. and I guess the other question I had was, you know, what kind of feedback did we get from the teachers in regards to how, how they thought the behavior went this year versus last year or referrals versus, you know? I, I would just say that just that PBS school climate survey, part of that lens is also the teachers and faculty fill out some of it. So we have that for elementary, we have that for middle, we have that for high school. And I know, um, so I don't know well as well the middle school and high school uh, information. But for me, my challenge is bringing two campuses that are eight miles away together so that we all feel the same about it. So that's, I know that's my big challenge. Uh, I would say, I can only speak for elementary. I think they feel supported. At least that's what I hear. And especially when we're interviewing new staff, that they feel like there's a lot of resources uh, and that we give it a lot of time and attention. Jamie? I just, I think it's important for the boards to know that the principals and the student support personnel have put a lot of time into those transition meetings. I, I, I hear the concern about making certain that we're prepared from eight to ninth or for elementary to middle school. And I just wanted the board to be aware that the student support team members have already met and reviewed individualized students and talked about the need for support plans and what the good transition plans look like. So I want the board to know that that cohort from eight to nine and then our elementary going into the middle school, all the teachers filled out transition forms for those students. There's been teams meeting um, that have been supporting students at the middle school meeting with the high school and then vice versa elementary but to middle. So I just want you guys to know that those meetings are going to happen. Good. Um, any more questions on the social emotional data comment? Um, one thing I should have mentioned for the school climate survey um, on, on the regular principal report, I guess. Um, you know, it's good to see some improvement in it, but it does seem like, particularly for the staff, we really do need to make it so that all of our staff feel, you know, supported and whatever you know it seemed like we were getting 80 or something percent which is you know good that 80 percent feel it but we do need to get to where everybody feels positive about there so anyway it seems like we still have some work to do on that <laughs> okay um anything else for the principals then we'll go backwards to Jamie, superintendent support. So you have my report in hand. I just wanted to uh, mention to the board that I've invited um, two of your graduated, um, two of your graduates uh, to the full board meeting on um, Tuesday night to do a celebration of learning and presentation on their senior pathway projects. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and, um, you know, I would say that as I get to sit on some of your students' presentations and pathways, uh, to see the rigor and an ability for our students to talk about how they were able to pursue work-based learning and to, to delve in into a research project on architecture in, in Greece and, and to be able to do research papers on that I just, I really would encourage you, if you're able to, to join the meeting on Tuesday night. Uh, and I waited on that celebration and learning till next Tuesday because I really wanted the full board to have a real sense and narrative to the rigor and the work that we're doing um, within the Pathways programming um, at the high school. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and then also just mention that you have, um, and I, I think the principal has already mentioned this, you have teams from each of your buildings going to best next week. 
Uh, there's no rest for the wicked, and we have over 50 teachers attending the Best Institute next week, representing WRBSU, so a shout out to that stat of those teachers who are going to be already planning for next school year. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to mention um, to the board just some legislative updates. Universal Meals did uh, come into law. The governor allowed that to take effect. Uh, the OA Childhood Bill was vetoed. Um, just a reminder to the board, the disappointing part of that bill, or originally even, uh, that was veto, was that it did not provide 1.0 average daily membership for pre-K students, even if they receive pre-K programming for five days a week, full day. Um, so that is a piece to that bill that was vetoed. Um, but I would just say is disappointing, um, even if that bill is, if, if the veto override happens. Really, a lot of that state funding is going to private um, child care providers, and there's really not any funding flowing in for public uh, pre-K providers. Um, and so just wanted to highlight that to, to the board. Um, and then finally, uh, I'll entertain any questions folks may have. And I just wanted to, um, before that, just say that I, I hope the board just joins me in celebrating um, Principal Bradley's retirement and long tenure in public education um, of serving uh, countless students, staff, faculty with a heart full of love uh, and helping us with the uh, transition into the White River Unified District from the uh, Bethel and Wickham High School. Um, and uh, the admin team is going to be having uh, an admin team meeting uh, tomorrow, but then a celebration in the afternoon to send Owen off uh, in style. And so I just hope you join me in thanking uh, Owen for all of his service and dedication to our kids. Yep. Thanks, Thank you. And I'll take any question folks may have. And, and Owen, I'll give you uh, a mo even a, you know, a more inspirational speech tomorrow in person, too. Okay. <laughs> when are we going to, uh, when, when is the transition from one company to another for the buses, Jamie? When's that happening? So it takes effect effective July 1. July 1. And uh, update on the, the buses. Uh, so we are fully staffed with drivers uh, in Bethel uh, in regards to Rudd. And when I met with STA yesterday, they're feeling really optimistic that we're in good shape. Uh, we're, we are fully staffed everywhere in Royalton right now. We are short a driver or two, but they have people that they are that have already completed some testing. So they're feeling really confident that we're going to be in good shape in Royalton. Um, and we look to be good, in good shape with our uh, special education uh, suburbans. So we're feeling um, optimistic in regards to being fully staffed uh, to start next year. And one of the things that we're doing is um, principals have assisted us in gathering as much accurate information on our bus routes as possible to look at where there could be um, any efficiencies um, seen in regards to how we run our bus routes um, and making certain that we are coordinating efforts with bus routes. And then we're also even looking into how we might coordinate efforts with special ed transportation um, with some of our kids who go and drive past other supervisory unions to the north to get to places like Maple Hill, Choice Academy, and Barry, things of that nature, so that we can share in those costs. Um, and just to remind the board, um, we pay the, a set price per bus actually used we're not locked into a number of vehicles. Um, so if we find those efficiencies, then we will receive 100% um, savings because uh, we won't need the bus. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Um, Tara. So you all have my report. It outlines what's happening in our office for the month of June. Uh, update on the audit. The auditors are in our office today and tomorrow finalizing the payroll and accounts payable section of the audit. And then the rest of the audit is scheduled for early October and we are on target for draft audits for our December deadline. So and this is a new auditing it firm? It is a new auditing firm, yep. Seems like it's... Great start to the yes, partnership. Yes, good start, good. Yep. 
Okay. And then my discussion item is in your discussion items, so we'll come back to that. Okay. And if there's any questions. All right. Um, policy committee, board civility code of ethics reading. Has everybody gotten a chance to read over the most recent draft of the board civility slash code of ethics? Policy. Anybody? Yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty good. Um, I know it's been a few different drafts, so we've talked about it a few different times. I think the only um, only comment I had on it is I, I like the language where we talk about if there is a potential um, you know third documented instance or or a, a serious misconduct and how that would be handled at the next board meeting. Yeah. I, I really do think that there should be something put in there with a timeline on when a complaint is lodged, so much time for a letter to be sent to that individual in receipt of said complaint. Um, and I, I didn't see anything in there in regards to that. Yeah, it just says the board chair shall provide a written response to the member of the public. Yeah. It doesn't say timeline. So I don't know if it, you know, would it be helpful to, you know, I, I just kind of look back to the, the complaint that we had here in November, and sometimes it's misconceived on how fast things are receded or, you know, it's just the way that one hit, it hit right before a board meeting, so we didn't take it up then, so then it had to be moved a whole other meeting, yeah. which... To us, we felt like that was pretty, you know, that we were moving through the process at a, a quick pace, but right. to the average person, they thought, well, why are you taking so long to bring this up? So sure. um, so I just thought maybe if there was some sort of language in there to say that, you know, within so many calendar days, that there would be a, you know, I don't know, a, a letter of receipt of complaint, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Jamie, do you have any thoughts on that or? Yeah, I mean, we could say that um, it'll be taken up at the next regularly scheduled board meeting and that the, that the chair would issue a response within, you know, two weeks after the board meeting. Uh, we have language similar to this that was just put into place. Um, I can't remember what policy it was. We just put a policy that said that we would respond by a certain amount of time so that I can look at that language as a model um, but those are sort of my thoughts yeah, I can see what he's saying like the language right now says response to the member of the public with what steps were taken so it's kind of an after the fact thing it might make sense to have some sort of response with what steps will be taken yeah. you know in a so within seven days of receiving a complaint the board chair will respond with the action steps that are all outlined within like the procedure of the policy or something. Right. Yeah. Like, we will take it up at this time at the board yeah. or whatever. Or, you know, yeah. we don't feel I was like this, I apologize. You know, this is their first strike, but it doesn't rise to the level of, you know, Got that it. sort of thing. <clears throat> but other than that, I thought it came together pretty well. I know it's definitely been a living document here over the last couple months so yeah but I, I think it's important to get it right yeah. so Agreed. Yeah. no I, I think a policy like this it is worthwhile to take the time to get it right mm. all right any other comments on that then we'll move to the Go ahead, Jenny. Just, just a real quick update on policy. Just so the board knows, there are two required policies um, that just came out of the legislature in regards to school safety around um, policy around how we handle visitors in schools um, and also policy around how we handle our emergency preparedness and training and practice. Um, there's been model policy provided to us out of the VSBA. Um, that those policies I have already drafted uh, based on the model policy, and I'm bringing that forward to the policy committee on Monday. 
uh, starting next Tuesday. So the SQ Policy Committee will see those next Tuesday and possibly act on them. So boards will start reading those in August. So we'll, I just want you to know we're, we're moving right forward with that, that work. All right. Thanks. Okay, uh, facilities task force updates. We don't really have an update to offer um, because other, well, I have, we have some exciting things to offer about some of them, but in regards to the facility task force meeting um, to follow up on EI and our architect out of um, Banwell, um, as far as creating us a punch list that focuses on the expansion project and school safety parameters. I am just finding in general, it doesn't matter what architect you're talking about. We've got a few different architects working in the SU. It just seems to be a slow process right now. Um, uh, so I don't, we don't have anything to offer in that regard. What I would say is, is I wanted to just offer the board an update in regards to, uh, Tara and I have been meeting weekly with uh, EEI, Energy Efficient Investments, on site at Bethel, uh, at Rochester, Stockbridge, and at Tunbridge. We'll continue those owner meetings. Uh, I'm gonna invite the facility task force to start joining those meetings every two weeks to do walkthroughs once they start uh, construction. But just so folks know, um, the EI is ha has a presence. They were in buildings today. They will be in buildings tomorrow helping teachers box up things uh, so that we have eight foot clearance in rooms and the middle school at Bethel will become officially a construction zone on Thursday. Um, and so I just wanted to provide that update. There is a little hitch with some Act 250 permitting uh, in regards to the Bethel pellet, um, sorry, the Bethel wood chip heater around emissions around the difference between a oil fire burner emissions versus a wood fire burner permission uh, emissions. I know the EI had a meeting, um, it might have been today, uh, to try to finish up that Act 250 permit. If not, it could delay the actual installation of the wood chip mm. boiler by two months. Um, it will not delay all the work that we need to do in the classrooms and or the installation of our propane. Um, um, whatever. So just wanted to provide that update and Tara and I are meeting with EI, EI again on Thursday and then I was going to extend that invitation to the rest of the facilities task force bi-weekly to be on site if you guys can be. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you, Jamie, because Eric had called me, I don't know, Friday maybe to let me know about that. I believe, I believe the meeting was today and I believe what they were trying to do was to get the jurisdictional opinion modified, um, and he seemed confident that that was going to happen. Um, it was just the way that the opinion was written, and um, so I, I don't know. Maybe I'll try and reach back out to him and see what he heard on that. Yeah, good. He did look in. Good. I asked him to. Yeah. Um, if it does delay two months, what would that put us at for actually having a working boiler? November. Well, we will have a working boiler. It'll right? just be propane. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was thinking it'd be November, early December. November for a blue chip. Yeah. Okay. If it didn't change. And the propane can heat our building. I mean, that's it's redundancy. We built in redundancy mm -hmm. with the propane. But. Okay. All right. Um, unless there's anything else for the facilities. Discussion, we'll move to the discussion items. Um, athletics and activities strategic planning. Yeah, so uh, and Chris reached out to me a little uh, earlier this evening, and so um, I think it's a discussion that Chris and I will have before we bring it back to the board. But one of the things I came up with was speaking with our um, athletic director, activities director, Tim Perot. We talked about the summer schedule for school, um, and. Part of that is hosting Babe Ruth baseball and softball teams. Uh, our track coach will be, um, he's also our cross country coach and winter track coach. And he'll be uh, offering kids coming into their ninth grade year uh, once a week running. So he'll meet at the school and they'll run. Our schedule in the gym is pretty busy on Monday, girls basketball. And that started today and it goes through till uh, July 28th. 
on Mondays, girls basketball, Tuesday, girls soccer, and then girls softball team is in the fitness center, and they're doing a weight training. Um, and that on Wednesday, girls basketball is at West Rutland for a league they're in, and boys basketball are in the gym. Thursday, girls softball is in the fitness center, and boys soccer are outside in the field. And then Fridays is boys basketball. We offered a clinic that started to, uh, today, so uh, there's a basketball camp that's going on for grades four through eight, and high school, um, varsity high school players are helping out with that. Uh, just to go over our, our participation for the school year, uh, in the fall, we had 104 student athletes, and also 35 were in the play. In the winter, it was 90 total, and 35 were in the musical, and then in the spring, we had a total of 86. And this is not including our after-school clubs that we offer. Um, so a couple points that I was just, as I was writing this down, thinking about how important summer is, and athletics, and this and that. The baseball team doesn't do anything in the summertime, and they've been pretty competitive for the past 20 some odd years, probably 30 years. Um, but Legion is available for them. And also there's no like real track program in the summertime. We're pretty successful in that. Um, I spoke with the um, Jim Hewitt, who was the um, rec director. Um, he talked about the numbers are increasing, and they work directly with Bethel and the, um, and the Bethel Youth Sports. And if there's a limited number, then they combine the rec teams to make sure that there's a program for them. He said currently they're having problems with finding coaches. That there's plenty of students that are interested, but not very many coaches. Um, and then also during the summer, uh, there's camps that are offered at our school from the Red Door Church. They offer a great soccer program, uh, basketball camps, and so forth. So um, I think we're, we're doing a lot of work in our athletics as far as making sure that kids are busy during the summer and improving their skills. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I apologize, Jeff and I, um, I'm sure he's just as busy as I am, and um, we were able to touch point, I don't know, a week ago maybe, yeah. um, a brief discussion on it. I happened to find online um, through another high school, not in our area, they, what they call an athletic strategic plan. Um, so I shared that document with Jeff, unfortunately, right before the meeting. Um, so what it is is basically, and we'd like to kind of, not just athletics, but the arts, is have, have, have a type of uh, living document that can be annually uh, reviewed and, um, and updated. Um, and, and, and this one that I had shared with him kind of, you know, kind of sets a good um, um, template guidelines for how to, how to put that together. Um, so I, I'll, I'll find a time for, to meet with Jeff and, and then, you know, and maybe we can even do it with the, the two um, activity directors, you know, be kind of nice to sit down and, yeah. you know, is this, it looks like it's a fair amount of work if we wanted to do it this way, you know, right. is this something that, you know, we could do and if so, how long would it take us to do it and, you know, maybe we can report back to the board in July on kind of, you know, how long this might take or what, what, what it really yeah. might look like. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think it's a good idea, um, kind of have a document of, you know, just like when you're talking about other activities, I know when you first have your first kid kind of going through, like for music, say, you know, you don't really know going in kind of what's going to happen until it's like, oh, it's time for them to get an instrument and start playing. And it's kind of, it's useful to kind of know like, oh, that's what happens in fifth grade. And if you, you know, these are resources for, you know, if you want to do piano lessons before that, here's some options and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so, and same thing with sports, you know, like if we had the, you know, these are the soccer spring, fall rec options and spring options, you know, for ex more, that kind of thing. Yeah, and this, and this document I shared with Jeff, um, it, it kind of goes through a couple of, you know, kind of helps you with this template of, you know, a portion of it will talk about, you know, how to find the right people to coach or mentor these programs. Um, and then the next part of it talks about, you know, the different type of uh, activities that are in and around 
athletics in the arts, but not directly. Like an example might be homecoming. You know, how do you promote that? How do you get more people engaged in that? Uh, those types. And then there's another piece that just talks about, like you were saying, the, the opportunities that students have. What would be the opportunities that we, would, and every year we review that and say, hey, you know what, we, we have a bunch that are really in your, I don't know, lacrosse or, or whatever it is, or, sure. or, you know, do we have enough to make a team or, you know, we, um, and then one oh. thing that was also pretty neat, uh, other than, you know, athletics itself or the arts is there's a model in there to talk about, um, you know, donors and, and fundraising and how do we, you know, plan for the future if we want to get that, you know, that arts center, you know, how, how do we plan for that? Um, or, or other facilities that we might want, you know, track facility or things like that. How do we, how do we plan for that over, you know, four or five, ten years uh, sure. type deal. So, um, yeah, that's so also good I think we'd probably be more prepared on the, the next go around. Yeah. It, it's a start and I think we're heading in the right direction. I have a question I'm just curious about. Do we have something in place uh, for a precedent for a kid that would want to compete in a sport where they can achieve individually, like golf or swimming? There is something. Yep, we, we have a golf, um, we have a golf team. team. We uh, a couple of individual ones. We have we have uh, a fishing. Bass fishing, yeah. Bass and fishing. they compete as golf. individuals. Yep. But like, because what I was thinking is, and this is not a suggestion for this sport per se, but when I was when I was wrestling in high school, you could win your match, but if you didn't have 13 guys, you were going to lose the meet probably because you had to forfeit. But that one kid that kept winning matches could go to the states and become the state champion. And, and so, you know, it, it's some of the schools, and this was granted down, down south, um, they would have teams without entire teams. They'd be like, okay, well, We've got five kids that want to wrestle. We're going to lose every single meet, but these five kids deserve to wrestle, and those kids would excel in their in their chosen sport. So. We have one student interested, and in, so we provide member to member, so he could wrestle at Randolph. So that's something that he was thinking about doing. Okay. And if there's more interest, then we, you know, definitely would try to find a coach and an opportunity to to do that in the house. Yeah, because I think most of them are team oriented but have the ability to make it up like like um, uh, boys track and field for instance like you know maybe the team doesn't win states but an individual has the opportunity to go to regionals or something like yeah. that yeah. Um, and, and I believe golf is the same way yeah. mm -hmm. it, there's a team piece of it and there's an individual piece of it I don't know about the fishing it, that might be just a team. No, the is fishing, it individual you can go to the yeah. nationals yeah well, so, we, got a, we got a pennant in the for fishing and, and oh. bowling um, yeah. so when we were at the chorus the other day, we were at the concert. I looked up and I pointed to my wife. I said, "I didn't know we had a banner for fishing. We had a, a state championship for fishing." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. all righty." And there's yeah. only one division in the whole state. So that's <laughs> very impressive. Yeah. I, I was impressed. Yeah. I, I pointed. I pointed it out. Yeah, if, if our high school doesn't offer something, they are able to do it at a different high school that does. So, right. you know, if we have somebody doing lacrosse. Yeah, we have a couple of girls that go to Hartford play lacrosse. And, yeah. you know. I think we have a student doing the decathlon state level this yeah. week. Yeah. She was in fourth this morning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a three-day event. Night. Yeah, it's on the news. Yeah. yeah. I was so excited. <laughs> That's cool. Right on. All right. Um, so I guess the goal for the athletic and the strategic planning would be to kind of come up with some sort of document and just longer term plan for yeah yeah all right so we'll table that for now and come back to it at a future time mm -hmm. all right um tara annual tax anticipation note. so each year for our new board members if you're not familiar with this uh our we get a tax anticipation note and it was on the, the morning for the annual meeting that allows the school district treasurer to borrow funds while we're waiting for our tax revenue to come in and also the revenue from the education fund and those only come in at certain points of the year so we need to have cash on hand if necessary in order to cover um, accounts payable and payroll so we get a tax anticipation note each year we will continue our relationship with community national bank and this year the borrowing rate is 3.97% and the earnings rate is 4.32%. So on July 1st, the full tax anticipation note is available to the treasurer. 
but she only draws down what she actually needs when she needs it. And any additional funds that are not drawn down, we earn interest on them. So that's how it works. Nice. Um, so this year, the RUDS tax anticipation note is $2,859,664. And then I gave Ray the motion language for you to read. But if there's any other questions, I'll happily answer them. Sorry. They're okay. I put it in the chat. <laughs> 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 they can't see. <laughs> Rates are higher this year. Yes, we were at 1.55 yeah. um, for the borrowing and 1.75 for the earnings. Yeah. It's nice that both sides go up. Yeah. As long as the earnings keeps being higher, like we're good. I was going to ask, but I kept my mouth shut. Can, can we make money on this deal? We do. I mean, we do make money when I provide to you your um, quarterly reports, that interest. Like, right. that's part of that interest income that the district is making. That's the interest income. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a TAM for four million dollars. <laughs> Pam would have a heart attack. <laughs> well, it's nice to be in a position where we can earn interest, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. And the fact that because of our surplus that we had, like the TAM is actually lower this year, so we're only borrowing two point eight versus three point one. Right. So mm -hmm. like, as that continues. Can anybody see that? Said, we should do three point one and get four percent on that extra surplus. <laughs> Can't justify that in cash flow analysis. Fine. <laughs> All right. I would entertain a motion from somebody who would like to read that. Motion to approve the 2023-2024 tax anticipation note in the amount of two million eight hundred fifty-nine thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars with Community National Bank and authorize the signing of non-arbitrage and use of proceeds certificate, arbitrage certificate, resolution and note, and instruct the school district treasurer to sign. Motion to pass. I'll second it. All right, so any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And I have the loan docs here with me tonight for you all to sign. Um, and because you're also the clerk, there is a couple extra places that I need you to sign. And I put a sticky note with an arrow. And then the rest of you just sign under the majority of the board. So if you can just see me before you go, that would be great. Thank you all. All right. Um, the WR board retreat um, discussion around planning for retreat in August or September. So um, we haven't done one, we didn't do one last year, but in the past we've generally tried to have a meeting where we kind of look at things from, take a step back from kind of the, the uh, usual day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month business to look at kind of where we are overall and, and, and <coughs> Yeah, have kind of a, a slightly longer board retreat where we get some food and um, yeah, talk about kind of the 50,000 foot view of, of where we want to be and what we can do. Um, so is that something people would be able to do this year? Are we interested in having a board retreat this year? It has been helpful in the past and I don't know if Rodney's willing to bring his barbecue, but... Maybe. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Um, the survey was done. What was the results of the survey with people choosing dates? There was a survey that went out asking so about August 15th the, and August 22nd. That was a different yes, retreat? Yes, that was for the, um, the supervisor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, when we say uh, August or September, we're talking about in place of the regular meeting, in August or September? Or? Well, I mean, that's that's part of the discussion we can have. Okay. Um, you know, generally, we've done it separately in that we kind of have our meeting for kind of a regularly, regular business. Mm -hmm. Then this is something separate. Um, 
Do we know what the Did results of the SU one was? Ray, you guys are muted. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oops. <laughs> Do we know what the results, Jamie, were of the SU potential retreat? If, if, if anything, it's looking like there, it's going to be in place of the full board meeting, that it would, it would be on that 22nd. Uh, which month? August. August. The 22nd. August. So, I mean, would we want to do two in August, or would you want to spread them out and, you know? Um, I will say there. that if we do two in August, I said the 22nd wasn't good for me on it's that survey, good. and I'll be going away on vacation. Mm. I could try and call in, but uh, I most definitely won't do it in person. Well, what did we decide last year? I mean, it was like we talked about waiting until schools get started and see how things are going so we get a little... We'll yeah. do it in August before the school starts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's when, tricky. When does school start this year? August Next year? Yeah. The 30th? What type of that day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. August 30th. Uh, Peggy, what were your thoughts? Well, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just going to say, as you know, farmers, farmers' hours, okay. August is busy with corn picking, and September is busy with corn chopping. But if I can get to a retreat, I will be more than happy to come. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think what kind of worked well the, one of the times that we did it was we did it, it was basically like Friday afternoon, evening, you know, I think it was like five to eight or something like that, and we had dinner and mm -hmm. discussed stuff. It's basically like a six-hour meeting is what, five, six hours, right? You just I don't think it was that long. Was it that long? Was it five to, five to eight or five to nine? Yeah, Four-hour meeting? What's that? The last one we had at the SU. Mm. Yeah, I think so. How long ago was that? So like then it was my second year here, so three years ago? Yeah, before COVID. Yep. Yeah, did it on Friday night. I think it was five to nine. Yeah. I remember correctly. A couple of us were still there after nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that something people are interested in doing? And would, you know, an, an evening, some night, some sometime like Friday evening or something like that. Yeah. We're talking September. So we're talking. Yeah. Why don't we plan on September because we have the other one in August. Mm -hmm. So. And corn shopping sounds less <laughs> uh, important than corn. Whatever it was. Picking ham. <laughs> as long as you can bring some of the corn. Um. <laughs> I, I don't have a calendar. Oh, I do. Uh, so you're, you're talking on Friday, so September 22nd. No, that's September's for you. Why well, don't we'll send out a doodle poll with some Friday dates? Okay. So you have the eighth, fifteenth, eighth or fifteenth, because it's twenty second. Like you said, it'll be the fair. I hope the fair is the Friday. Is it the fifteenth? That was the week of the fifteenth. The fair is always ten days after Labor Day. Oh, so that'd be the 15th. Yeah. So either the 8th or the 22nd, then? Let's go with the 22nd. Yeah, 22nd sounds good. And our regular meeting is? Probably the 19th. Right? <laughs> That's okay. Um, well, yeah, but we can, we can do a light meeting on Tuesday. Well, no, just the basics. Any cool. deep discussion will be on Friday. Yeah, the fair this year is the 14th or the 17th. Do you have any thoughts, Jamie? Or he looks like he's talking to somebody. Um, yeah, and I don't know how much, like, is the administration principals, would you want to join in? or? I'm good any day yeah. longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come from the brisket. But. Yeah, I would <laughs> Exactly. So roughly the 22nd, 5 to 8 or something like that? Is that yeah, what you're talking about? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's pencil that in. Does that sound okay, Jamie? I apologize. I was talking to uh, Principal Haley here and Sharon. What okay. was the date? Uh, September 22nd. It's Friday. So Friday evening. That's great. Doing dinner and 
All right, starting at five o'clock. Okay. Um, moving I'll on. make my famous meatloaf for the board. <laughs> there we go. Vegetarian. Um, Was that September twenty second? I apologize. At five o'clock. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, action items: We have done the annual tax anticipation note. Uh, now, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Um, Tammy, I, I realized that you had had your hand up a while ago, and I forgot to come back to you. Um, did you have something you wanted okay. to? Um, bring up? Um, at a high school level, um, I appreciated the overview that um, Mr. Thomas had provided, um, recognizing that some of our students have to have transport needs to getting to and fro um, the gym. Is there a place on the school website that identifies an overview of those open gym times for high school schoolers that you identified, Mr. Thomas? Uh, if there's not, there will be. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, Patience is good. Yeah. I can handle I don't mind waiting. I just, um, <laughs> as long as it's not when I have another meeting at the same time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, new hires resignations. I can go high school. So uh, in physical education, uh, Noel Wolf is our phys ed teacher. In art, Felicia Allard. In the library is Stacy Rupp. And then uh, a pair that's replacing John Rhodes, who is coming here to be the athletic director, um, is Ashley Kelly. I'm just going to read to the list because I can't quite remember who I've shared as this has been going on for a while. So we have Wendy Grunthal is going to be kindergarten at South Royalton, Melissa Wilson, grade one at South Royalton, Tiffany Bates, grade three at South Royalton, Libby Lane will be grade two at Bethel Elementary, Alyssa Castellini will be grade five here at Bethel, Jamie Blondin. James Blondin will be PE and ECO at South Royalton. Uh, and then on this campus for librarian is Cassandra Bertolini. And I think, and Crystal Lumber, who's been with us, is considered a new hire because she was a long term sub, but she, so she's technically on the new hire list. Are we fully staffed? Uh, the pending, uh, I have a preschool para interview tomorrow, and I still need one more support para, and then I think we are fully staffed. Fully staffed with, um, with educators, yes. As far as support staff, we could use those. That's what I'm looking at now. The high school's good? Yep. Middle school? I think the student support person is still open, isn't it, Jamie? There's an interview tomorrow. Great. That not everybody knows about. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, about. yeah. The interview tomorrow. We um, we have a candidate that we're going to be interviewing that was a runner up to an associate principal position in first branch. Nice. For student support. Good. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any other. Um, future agenda items. This way, have uh, I the. I don't yeah. remember when we talked about the um, uh, relooking at our current structure. And uh, when did we say we were going to come back around to that? For some reason, July was in my brain. Yeah. No, I think it was originally going to be, but. Jamie had asked if we could push that back to August. Oh, okay. That's still on. Yeah, it was going to be tonight. I didn't feel like we were fully prepared, and I also wanted to have Pierre be part of that conversation as well. And so we'll offer a full-blown uh, presentation on the pros and cons that we see at an administrative level in August. Okay. Um, okay, so there's that. There's athletic and activities, strategic planning. We'll have a follow up on that at some point. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's next month or a couple months, but. Are we meeting in July? Uh, no. Our next meeting will be August. August. Yeah. It's on the back of the page. All right, any other future agenda items? I think that's 
it for now. All right, our yeah. next meeting date is Tuesday, August 15th. Um, at 6.30, well, 7 o'clock at the Railroad Campus. So that should say 7 o'clock. Um, and I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> oh, a second. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Well, it's a good fishing night. Thank you. Thank you. Please note that you can be on time for 7 o'clock.